The Bliss of the Abyss. Once upon a time in a land far away, a poor farmer and his wife lived all alone. They were very lost. With Robert Newmark Jones. Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Bliss of the Abyss. Stevie. Me? What? What's up, bud? My cat has just come in here. Stevie. And then she just stares at me. Are you thinking of killing me? Is this my death sentence? But she's doing the blink kiss at me. Uh, when cats love you, they look at your eyes and they blink longingly. And that long, slow blink is their version of a kiss. Now you want to leave? Well, thanks for interrupting the intro to my podcast. You can leave if you want. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> what? Rubbing yourself against me and giving me a warning? <laughs> Her little brain's got all amped up. What do you want me to do? You want me to open the door? I can do that. Is that what you want? No. You want to play, don't you? I don't have your toy in here. Maybe you'll hunt the cap? Nope. <laughs> okay, alright. <laughs> Is that the, the most professional start to a podcast or the least? Professional starts of podcast. You decide. This week on the Bliss of the Abyss. <laughs> I hope this is the weirdest podcast that you regularly listen to. That is what I am trying to do now. Um, or not. Uh, this week I'm going to be talking to stand-up comedian Shiraz Yusuf. Phone call up now. I was out walking alone, boom, 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 boom. Didn't have nobody to phone, boom, 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 boom. Hello, mate. You all right? All right. How's it going? I'm okay. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Are you ready to do a podcast? I'm very, uh, very ready. Very been ready. ready. Been ready since the beginning of the fake lockdown. Really? I mean, it has been a long build-up, hasn't it? A long build-up, mate. All That's this, blue balls. All this not getting ill, it's been a long, a long build-up. Have you got ill at all dur- uh, during the lockdown? Actually, actually I, uh, just the day of lockdown, I got flu symptoms, for, and then for about two days... I was a bit ill, and then I was all right. <laughs> quit, so my, quit your moaning. <laughs> it might, huh? Now, listen, I seem to remember during the initial phase of lockdown, you were sending me gym selfies being like, what lockdown? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And that, and that day, that I probably think that that selfie, they shut the gym. <laughs> <laughs> As I, you I were in there. <laughs> I was, yeah, I was on my own. I thought, oh, this is great. I've got it all to myself. No, they shut it that day. I was really annoyed. Yeah. uh, That was that, mate. So, and then it's been press-ups all the way. Just press-ups all the way, body weight. What, have you got one of those, have you got a chin-up bar? I haven't, no, I haven't got anywhere to put it. What do you mean you haven't got anywhere to put it? You put it anywhere between the door. I don't want to damage my nice doors. You don't damage it. Oh, my God. No. Shiraz, do you not have a basic knowledge of carpentry? Uh, no, I don't look like Jesus like you. Uh, you actually, who do you reckon would you know the real Jesus? Yeah, not the like oh white guy with long hair who looks like <laughs> the Big Lebowski. The actual one, right? The Middle the Eastern one. Semitic man from thousands of years ago. He could have yeah. looked like either me or you. He could, he could have. We're like we're, he would be a cross between us both. Yeah. So if me and you had a love child, he'd look like a little Jesus. 
Uh, it would be a lust child. It wouldn't be love. It would just be lust. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, got, I did a very middle class thing today. I booked my um, duvet and sheets and that to be collected and washed and ironed because I couldn't bother to do it myself. <laughs> and, and then the guy that turned up looked like a cross between my brother and my cousin. I reckon he's from my gene pool. He looked. He just looked like. He looked like my cousin. He could have been my cousin. Did you he shake? Called, he called me sir. I felt really bad. Mm. I shake his hand and say, um, "Slam Lake, um, my bro- atheist brother." And uh, he wouldn't. He wouldn't even shake my hand. Really? Well, it's, it's not turned that made into a, a tragic it. story. It has, but he kept his distance because you know workplaces are having to do that. Did he maintain his dignity? Uh, yeah, I think he did. Yeah. Good man. I think I respected him. Yeah. Um, as I explained, my shirt that had a stain on it, which required <laughs> removal. I mean, maybe the thing is, dude, in lockdown, you've gone even weirder than you were before, and you were just freaking him out. <laughs> probably. It's probably what it is. It's very sad and lonely, and uh, I can't tell myself. Like, I, I watched this um, podcast with... Uh, you know the whistleblower for Cambridge Analytica? I've forgotten her name. Brit- oh, Brittany. Yeah, Brittany Kaiser, who actually was married to a friend of mine. Um, no way. Yeah, mate. For a few years. She was like a who? super floaty lefty. A proper friend? A, a friend from school, yeah. Um, without naming names. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I'm like... Well, you've told me that she was married to someone. I can just look it up now, but... Um... <laughs> I don't know if that means you'll be able to find him, though. <laughs> um, but to we, my beat. So you, 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 how how friendly were you? Are you with the guy still? Um, I haven't seen him in a while, to be honest. We were okay. sort of mates from school, and then afterwards, um, good bloke, very nice the guy. Uh, but that they they um they broke up. I don't know years ago, right? So I didn't realize she'd gone to work for the far right think tanks and stuff. Um, it's very bizarre. Uh, well, trajectory. the thing is, she's she's very. I really like her. She's very sharp, and I I, yeah. I feel that she's quite real. And I think that, like anyone else, at the age she joined that company, mm. um, she was just working for a company. It didn't realise the consequences. She's good at the job and right. very sharp, and uh, just you know got got sort of tied into the, the, mm. the success she was having. Caught up in it. Yeah. 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 So I don't. I, I don't criticise her for that. No. But my, my, what I was going to say is she was doing this podcast with a guy mm. and then um, she said she met Julian Assange recently. How's he doing? And, and she said he's like, it's like he has got psycholo- psychological issues because he's been oh, on his no. own for so long and he just basically rants at you. So I think I might have a bit of that. That's what I was... <laughs> that's, a, that's a long way to come around, Shiraz, for that. No. <laughs> <laughs> It was a long payoff. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I, I, it always links up at the end in my hour-long shows. <laughs> Wait, are you are you testing new material on me now, mate? We're meant to just be having a chat. I'm not one of those wankers, those comics you sit with, and you can tell they're doing a bit on you. Mm. Fucking I know. They're awful. Taking notes of your every reaction, looking uh, to see the way in which you laugh, how long you laugh. Yeah. You know, he does that a lot, and and I'd say it too. But I, I like him; he's a good guy. He's a, ben Clover does that a lot. Um, we'll, we'll, be chatting we'll bleep to his him. name. Say again. We'll bleep his name. Don't worry. Oh, okay, fine. But yeah, he does that a lot. He'll be sitting with him, just having a chat, and then he'll start talking about something, mm. and you know, he's doing a fucking bit. <laughs> it's so annoying. <laughs> Like when you watch Louis C.K. on no chat shows or Bill Burr and they're doing their bits to they're promote just, their show. Yeah. And they just sort of slide it in, but we know it's not slid in. We know fucking the hair start. Doesn't feel good, does it? Am I right swearing on your cunting podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to be bleeping everything out. <laughs> I'm going to bleep out every fourth word you say and see what that sounds like. <laughs> I think it but, might it might be amazing. It might be brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Deep out the word that people will have no idea. <laughs> That'll be very socially responsible if you if you delete the swearing. Oh, someone's trying to call me. Oh god, oh. I, don't, I don't want to talk to these people now. 
I'm, I'm liking the low tech, the low techness of your podcast. Is ring someone and do it. <laughs> well, it's, it actually took me. Uh, wait, I should. Uh, it's actually taken me a long time to work out just how to do this. When 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 I look at it now, it looks so simple. For some, have, do you ever come across something that for some reason your intelligence is like I cannot solve this problem? So I yes. watched like I watched. I must have watched ten videos just on how to do this. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. What, that podcast? The the recording the phone call through the recorder thing. Right. Just, Actually, I wouldn't have had to do without looking it up. I mean, I think I think some people would have intuitively just known how to do it as well. Do you know? What I mean, that's different. People mm. have different brains, don't they? Different things that they find like easy yeah. or interesting. A guy in a ponytail with an all black um, turtleneck top would have done it instantly. <laughs> do you think that's where I'm going wrong? I should have ponytailed up my hair this morning. You should have done that, mate. Put the black top on and uh, maybe glasses as well. And you are tech guy um, ready. <sighs> so listen, dude, how are you doing? I'm all right. actually. I, I've generally been all right. I've um, uh, I've been staying acting you know training at home i've got my day job thing um i've been playing a lot of street fighter five <laughs> a lot i've been playing online and it's like i've been playing street fighter since i was 14 mm. and when you go online it's like you've never played it before what it's, do you mean it's just so hard people are just <laughs> people are better than the hardest level in the in the like ai it's just yeah it's, it's like playing nothing when you play the computer it's because it's so random <laughs> You can't account for people being random, and it's just really frustrating. If I'm honest, I get really angry when I lose. Really angry. So um, you're working out loads and yelling at the computer as you play Street Fighter. Yeah, pretty much. I, I just get. I'm trying. And I'm seeing it as a challenge uh, of how I control myself <laughs> when my emotions are spiked. So it's actually quite a. A good learning exercise playing Street Fighter Five. This, this is how you relax. <laughs> yeah, this is how I enjoy myself. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, when you've got nothing, little else to do. Have you have you basically. not taken up a hobby? You know, you could become a, a good. Uh, you could become great at crochet. Um, you know, you... actually, I have, I have. I started reading up a hell of a lot on on stocks and shares and investing. So I put a few grand into some shares and. Oh yeah. And Anyone, that that, can you drop any names on the podcast? Who's a hot tip? Hot tip, yeah, I've got some, uh, okay, so. Boom, 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 welcome to Shiraz on Stocks. <laughs> it's a sub-podcast. <laughs> it's a sub-podcast. Basically, a lot of people will know the market, when COVID hit, everything in the market went down, right down, everything went down. So there were bargains to be picked up. So I started picking up a few things. Some of those things went up. So I picked up some Disney shares. Um, that's been climbing back up. Uh, and some Starbucks, that's been climbing up. And then I started looking at gold and gold miners. Gold. He's going deep, people. Gone deep, mate. So I bought some gold mine Because when gold goes up, gold mining shares go up. Of course. So my gold mining shares have gone up. Um, well, they were up at forty percent. They're up thirty six percent today. Ooh! But they've gone up. Um, I put some money into a company called Glencore. Now Glencore supply the cobalt to Tesla. The cobalt to Tesla. What does that mean? Tesla. Tesla. Oh, Tesla. Tesla. Oh, right, 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 right. right. <laughs> I got really so confused. The cobalt is used in the batteries. Now, so, but, how do they get the cobalt out of the ground? They steal it from Africa. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> don't, don't say that so casually. That's horrific. All right, it's not theft. It's not theft. It's, you know, they, they are a mining company in Africa, but they they may they are being done by the <laughs> Swedish government for something which may or may not be <laughs> Impacting not. your shares. Man, yeah. it sounds well, like the time to sell, mate. <laughs> They are down five percent, but you've got to stay in for the longer term. That's the thing with for me with the stocks and shares thing, right? I've done it a bit, and it's just yeah. the thing is you basically put that money in and you just ride it until the end. 
Like I had some, <laughs> I opened it, I don't know, when I was, I don't know, mid twenties or something, I had like 50 quid in Debenhams. <laughs> And it was <laughs> it was a wild ride, right? <laughs> and, uh, but now because they they got um what do you call it? They're not listed anymore. But the share st- no. So the sh- but the share still appears in my app because I was once a holder. But it just says yeah. N. It just says N A on the amount. So so basically, obviously, you just lost the money because uh, yeah, I, I, I rode it right into the sunset, mate. <laughs> How how does that work? Because if if you go bankrupt, obviously if they go bankrupt, you lose your money. But how how have they withdrawn from the market without returning your money? Um, thank you for asking. Welcome to Finance Cast with your host. <laughs> <laughs> I don't fucking know. I've just, I just yeah. assume it's gone, mate. I mean, mate, you could probably get that that fifty quid might be worth a lot more today. <laughs> They're not listed. It's worth exactly zero. <laughs> You put right to customer service in Devon <laughs> and just explain the situation. <laughs> I feel like they should be writing to me. I mean, they've still got stores open, don't they? How does it work? I I don't know because I've not I've not bought shares in a company that's then delisted. I didn't I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, because they went that's broke. Like, I'm glad I spoke to you because that's like an edge case. I'm going to educate myself on that. Yeah. Oh, I bought some shares in something you'll love in a weed company. Oh, yeah? Who's? Uh, it's, they're called Afria. They're a, a Canadian company. Sensible. Big business over there. Yeah. So I've made £4.73 in a minute. <laughs> oh, shit. 0.11% at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got to look at the long term, mate. It's all about the long term. Who knows? Maybe one day it will be N slash A for you as well. <laughs> You fucking start buying from them for your massive drug habit, then it will just go right up. You know, the one thing is, I did, uh, I did have a look at the Tesla stock, right, just around, and it's gone up some something like it's like tripled or something since I looked. Oh, at they're it. like it's eight hundred pounds a share now, something like that. <sighs> yeah, and it was one of those moments where I was like, <laughs> buy low, sell high, but I didn't. Ah, <laughs> uh, mate, when, when did you when did you look? Initially, like I know, beginning of lockdown t- kind of time. Oh fuck! Do you know what I mean? But no one knew that what the fuck was going on. I kept asking my friend, who like he works in finance, and he, the amount of times he said the words "dead cat bounce" to me, Terence, <laughs> Terence, you know who you are. Every yeah, time I asked him for advice, he was like, "Dead cat bounce, mate." Yeah, but you fucking would have made loads if you'd have invested on March the eighteenth, for example. The shares for Tesla were three hundred and sixty dollars. Exactly. So, so that's like three hundred quid, and now they're at they're a thousand dollars, so about eight hundred quid. Do you think it's going to still go up? I mean, it could be that this is the. This doesn't feel like the end of the of the climb. Well, it's definitely not. No way. I don't think it is, especially from what I've been reading. And he's got the trucks coming out, so. It's the I only think... way is up. Mate, if you can get, like, I might buy a share, like 800 quid or two or something like that. Wow. And just leave it. And, and just ride and... it. <laughs> just ride it, mate. All the way <laughs> up and all the way down. No, I think they've, yeah, it probably it probably could be the future. I mean, it would be good if it was. Um... Well, I think it definitely is. I mean, it's 355% increase in, in, in the last year. I mean, mate, I, if you can get the money together, I think it's a good investment. Well... You heard it here first, except you didn't, because it's already 800 quid. You kind of missed the initial um, dead cat bounce. Or, or... So hold on. Your advice has been to invest in Tesla and Disney. Wow, you're really risky, dude. Yeah. Pick some and rank weed. outsiders. And weed. Don't forget the weed. Weed made you, what, three quid? But so far, but you know. Well, it's gone up 0.2% while we've been talking. How about that, mate? Five pound up. Shit, since we chatted, you're five quid richer. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Two pound. <laughs> so it's all happening here, mate. Um, so what what has been your highlight now that we're coming out of lockdown? What's been your lockdown highlight? The best thing that happened. The best thing that happened, and, and it's also the worst thing that happened. <laughs> um. But it's not a funny story. Great. 
it's a sad story. <laughs> is there any way you can punch it up as you go? Uh, you know, add in a crazy side character. Let's call him Lance. <laughs> Okay, I'll try and add in a Lance. No, but basically, I met a girl. And her, name was going... was, her name was Lance. Her name was Lance. And it was going so nicely. And then uh, all of a sudden, she turned around and said, look, I'm not looking for anything serious, so uh, let's just cut it off. And that was the end of that. Shit, mate. It's fucking harsh, mate. It was quite brutal. How but that, but it, How... I had an amazing time with her, mate. The sex was fucking amazing. <laughs> it was so good. Do you I think... Don't think... Do you think she's uh, she's she left you for Lance? No, she left me for Moscow, where she's from. So she's gone back there. Russian. Um, yes. Oh, the accent's sexy, though, isn't it? It's nice, mate. It's nice. Actually, she was Kazakh, so mm. living in Moscow. Um, mm. So she had a very kind of. She was like half Korean, so she, she's just so fucking beautiful, mate. Yeah. And a sexy so good and then uh and just like that it was over well you've still got me <laughs> still got you mate <laughs> so we can do some horrible week nights and i can feel like i'm gonna die because you've so never I... got high in your life I... oh i did it once you did it once november... i didn't realize november that two... i thought okay so i thought you'd literally never partaken in any marijuana ever Oh, no, no. November 2018 was when I did it. Tell the, the tale. And, but okay, so I was smoking it and I felt like sort of funny, and, but it was okay. I was quite cool. And then I smoked quite a bit more and then I <laughs> thought I was going to die. My How heart old were stopped you? Going. November 18, 42. What was the context? Oh, I did a gig in Ghana. Ah. Oh. I remember this, yeah. yeah. The, Accra, right? Say again? Accra. Accra, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I went to Accra, Ghana, did the gig there in a bar, um, and the bar owner, and, and it was it was hard, but it went well, and then we all did weed in his in the owner's apartment, and... Uh, was it intense? <laughs> it was, I think I just smoked too much. I think I should have just had a little bit, and, and yeah. then I felt left it there. Well, exactly. It's like anything, right? If it's like the first time you had booze, you like drank half a bottle of whiskey, you'd be like, fucking yeah. hell, I can't handle this stuff. Whereas if you just have a nip or, or like a, a J2O, you'll be fine. Do you know what? That's what happened. I, I drank half a bottle of vodka the first time I drank and I was sick. <laughs> you put me off vodka for life. You're an extremist. Although, to yeah. be fair, you were... Just recently hooking up with the Russian lady, so maybe you know the vodka thing. It's in your blood. It's in my blood, mate. It's in my blood, yeah. mate. She was she was so nice, but she just cold, cut off from cold. She... <laughs> no, dude, so, isn't so that stereotype? Warm. She was so warm, I know, but it, she was so warm and so nice, and it was so lovely. And, and then, then... <laughs> oh no, drink... um, I'm sorry, I man. Think... Well, you know. How do you meet her? Did you use the apps? It was on the app, yeah. Wow. I met, I met her a couple of months ago, and then it took a while to, to meet up and stuff. Played and the then, long uh, game. Played the long game, mate. Just Put like in the work. It's like with stocks and shares. You've got to know when to get out. Or you just... <laughs> no, it's just N slash A. Exactly. If I had finished with her, I wouldn't have felt so bad, probably. Right. But I didn't. I wanted to marry her, and uh, she didn't want that. But I didn't really. <laughs> I didn't really want to marry her. But I would have liked to, to have lasted a bit longer. So, you know, you want to see where something goes. Send her a picture of a, of a ring. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, I know, mate. I've, I've already know. deleted the number. Really? Yeah, you've got to delete the number. You, otherwise, you just hang on and you just think, ah, oh, and you start sending stupid messages. How, like how quickly done. afterwards do you delete the number? Um... I mean, I waited, uh, when did she do it? Tuesday? So I just deleted it on <laughs> Saturday. So I, I waited about four days. Four days. Yeah. Wow. Because, because that gives you enough time to think, it, can this be salvaged? <laughs> um, and, it, and it couldn't hurt. You know, she was just was totally not up for anything. And uh, so I thought, delete it. So four days, that's your, that's, or is it a rule of thumb? Is it like, depending on how the situation itself is playing out? 
It depends. Yeah, yeah. It depends on the situation. There's no rule for that. But you, you have to delete. If someone is just not responsive to you and they're not interested in you, don't keep the number. That's what I, I think. Just delete what, the number. What if they then, need longer than four days, though? Say again? What if they need longer than four days? You could be destroying people's unions out there. If, uh, I mean, you know, you they, might need a week to really think things through. I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, yeah. Take the time you want, but don't, my my mm. point is, don't don't hang on to the number because you're just uh, hanging on to a losing situation for yourself. And right, it, it, you know, you need to be able to move on and, and do other things. Would you say you've become more or less introspective since lockdown? Uh, I would say definitely more. I think probably all have, haven't we? I think so. I think it's a weird. Um, outcome that we haven't probably considered um, that much. Yeah, this is totally. No one would predict this would happen. No. So it's going to um, affect. It's going to affect the way we are for a while. I think it's weird. Like I was um, on the weekend. Uh, we were cycling. Caitlin and I through uh, Batsy Park and noticed that the zoo was open. We were like, oh my god, we can go to the zoo. And it's, oh yeah, that's right. It's just Open like it's just like a petting zoo, but it's uh, I mean it's got a few like lemurs and stuff. It's yeah, but it was fucking cool, right? Even though it's like it's so minor, normally yeah. Like we were as excited as if. So in a weird way, it's like when these things come back, our bar will be set lower. <laughs> That's right. You appreciate you appreciate these things more. Yeah. I, that's a, which is a good thing because we get so True. like. We get so used to everything that everything becomes boring. Right, and we take it for granted. Take it for granted. It's like they've just opened the gym up to do classes. Five people in a class, I didn't spinning know that. class. Yeah, um, mine has anyway. David Lloyd. And, <laughs> name uh, drop. <laughs> na- name drop David Lloyd. And uh, is this a paid it's appearance? Just, it's just. <laughs> It's just spinning, and spinning is fucking boring. I don't. I I'm not. It. I'm not into spinning, but no, you, but it was good. It was good because you haven't done anything. You haven't been to a gym for, for months. Mm. It's just nice, and then you appreciate. Oh, actually, this is quite. A, this is quite a nice thing to have. It's it's a freedom that you you were only aware of once it was taken away. Once it is taken away, my friend. <sighs> I know. I know. I know. Um, we booked. I think it's for two weeks' time. We're gonna. Yeah going to be going uh bowling and it's yeah. like even that as an idea and you know not until two weeks like it's that was something i mean whoever didn't take bowling for granted i guess <laughs> <laughs> when i was living in finsbury park to be fair we had to do that petition to save rowan's to save what sorry have you not been to rowan's in finsbury park shout out it's a fucking amazing amazing spot. No. it's bowling uh oh. two two floors and there's an arcade and like pool table ping pong and also it becomes like lit mm. like on the weekends you have to pay a little like one pound fifty or something entrance fee and it's oh, wow. an absolute bashment oh so it's like one of these sort of um parks with a cinema and bowling and everything like that but it's like an old school one i think it's like a from a theater from like i don't know the the, the 50s or something maybe earlier it's, okay. it's it's a unique it's a you can a unique establishment is what i'm saying and so you're you're being paid for um by uh by tesla and i'm <laughs> i'm the spokesman for rowan's apparently That's it, mate. oh i'm gonna go if, it, if it's if it's opening anytime soon go. i'll be there yeah um, what, what are you most looking forward to being able to do again just do some shit open mics <laughs> <laughs> i think we're all missing them aren't we London is missing. <laughs> What's your thoughts on the on the Zoom thing, the Zoom open mic? Oh, thing? fucking pathetic! What are you doing? Just shit. It makes me angry as well. Why? Yeah. Why is it? Why does it make us so furious? Because it's. Uh, I suppose no one likes to see weakness and desperation, and that's what it smacks of. <laughs> Just absolute desperation, and the people doing it generally are are the people who oh, shouldn't no. be. <laughs> They're the people who should not be doing it at all, ever, live or otherwise. And they're hanging on to their Zoom bullshit. Oh, no. Oh. 
What did you do one? You didn't do one, did you? (laughs) (laughs) All right, good. Good boy. I would never never debase myself in such a way, my friend. (laughs) Exactly. You debase yourself in so many other ways. Why? (laughs) Mate, what's speaking of which, what's going on with your open mic? Is are you still in talks with the pub? Oh yeah, it's been going weekly, dude. I mean, what do you mean? I mean is, are you ready to, to when when I open? Are, are you? Do you have a reserved thing? I've got a team ready to go. They're just, they're, <laughs> they're on the end of a leash, gnashing, <laughs> waiting to be released. <laughs> the marketing team will flood London for tires. <laughs> just let us out there, boss. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what? I would love to just fucking do the Arsenal gig. I'd just, I'd I mean? be happy to do that now. It was a great gig. It was all right, yeah. I mean, it was insane. But it was good. It was good, like, for me. I'd come from one and go to that one, and I'd just have a nice little set that I was starting to do a new set each time. Yeah. It was a great spot. Um, I hope they're okay. I think they own the place, so they won't be, like, kicked out by the landlords. Okay, that's good. But I do worry for a lot of these businesses, like, when they reopen, how many of them are just going to actually not reopen, and we weren't aware that they just went bust. Oh, yeah, so close to the edge. Some people's cash flow is really bad, yeah. Right, the hospitality industry, they don't have, like, buckets of money set aside. <clears throat> no. It's no, I don't know how this, how that's still standing. Um, when do you think this all ends then, mate? And I don't mean this phone call. <laughs> <laughs> um well july 4th is when the gym start opening again so i think that that signifies the end of it all <laughs> <laughs> july 4th mate independence. You and independence actually that's when i'm going bowling as well so you're going to be working out i'm going to be bowling that is well, fucking that's, freedom that's, end, <laughs> that's it we celebrate that's how we celebrate <laughs> And then I'll, I'll ask for my workout, I'll come around yours and we'll do some weed. How about that? <laughs> yes. Now listen, for your first time, would you like to eat it? No, no, no. I'm going to smoke it properly. Okay, but I'm going to make sure you don't go crazy, dude. Also, it's illegal, so we can't say that we're doing it. <laughs> well, we're not doing it anyway. It's just a joke. It's just yeah, a sort of pack- it's just a hilarious <laughs> bit. But it's if we pack- were pack- going to do it, then yeah. I'll get you, I'll get a chillum. Have you ever seen a chillum? No, what's that? Oh, um, it's the thing that the the sadhus in India smoke, like the big, oh. the big like clay pipe, and you kind of hold it in a weird hand oh, okay. bong situation. All right, yeah, that sounds fun. It's a bit, I like the fun. No, 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 it's a bit intense actually. Having thought about it, um, oh, is it? It really, yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay. Uh, let we we'll just keep it chill for the first time. Because it sound, all right. sounds like I you went overboard them. last time. That's all it I was. Think I, I think I did, yeah. It was a big bit, and I sm- took a really deep breath. <laughs> really deep breath, just to see how much can I fit in my lungs. And, uh, and then it all went into my heart. And, and then stuff. it was, and then it lasted for forever. And it was terrifying. Um, it was just racing, and I just, it's a really fucking weird feeling. I can't describe it. Just like a really weird feeling of fear. Yeah. Which it was rooted in nothing uh, other than that. Right. But in the moment, you can't tell yourself that, can you? It just becomes no. like all encompassing no. and you're sort of like in the throes of, of its power. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. That'd be a really good emotion to, to capture for, for an acting scene if you could, if you could capture it. Mm It'd be really useful to be able to use that if you could uh, replicate it. Well, I can think of an easy way of replicating it. Okay, bring bring it, bring the stuff along. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, uh, have theatres said when they are re- reopening? Um, the biggest producers have definitely pushed back to twenty twenty one. Wow. Um, yeah. Does that include your? Have you heard anything about your one? What, oh no! But dude, um, the venue uh, Trafalgar Studios is um, is merging its spaces, so our space where we were performing will be no more. We were the last play on there. So oh shit! They're changing to a, a one space venue. They're making that one bigger. 
So, <coughs> yeah, we don't have a home. But then, but I mean, presumably there will be other venues you can use in the future. I would imagine so. I would certainly hope so. So, so there is a plan to, you know, to, to try and kick it off again at the most convenient time. Yeah, it's definitely quite far down the road still, you know. I know July 4th is uh, is official Freedom Day. But, <laughs> <laughs> Brave heart day. What, um, have you done any auditions in this time? Have you had any auditions come Yeah, through? yeah. All things going, I should be in a short film shooting next month. Oh, that's cool. What's that then? Which is a project that I don't know how much I can say about, but yeah, I, I auditioned for over Zoom um, and then helped them um, with their casting as well. Yeah. Um, which is it's, it's a strange feeling because like, did I tell you I set up this whole green screen thing to try and get this Chinese tutoring company to hire me? To get a what company? A Chinese tutoring company. They're like an online teach things right. to Chinese students, right? But they have really stringent requirements. So, like, you have to wear a red uh, polo shirt. You have okay. to have a background, which is just their logo. So, like, you can print out, like, a bunch of A4 sheets and stick them on your wall. Or buy a banner. Or get a green screen. So, I installed a green screen into the spare room in Mate, an attempt... In an attempt to get them to to give me business, and they have they have given me nothing, right? And yet I'm able to get an audition through Zoom. How does it make sense, Shiraz? Explain uh, well, it. Well, it sounds to me like they wanted a communist party um, broadcast, and they wanted someone English to do it. And they're going to take your audition and use that <laughs> across China. So it's because you're in red with their background. Yeah. Does that not sound like? Chinese communist propaganda. Well, and, about... and their background is all red and white as well. So it's it's all very suspicious. Well, well done for helping China conquer the world, mate. <laughs> I mean, no, why why shouldn't I? It, are you suggesting in some way that COVID-19 came from that part of the world, Shiraz? Are you yeah. suggesting that? I would not, I would not suggest that. <laughs> um, but I am suggesting. <laughs> He's a paid shill, people. You're part of it with your Huawei phone, which you're probably broadcasting on now. Uh, first of all, it's Huawei, not Huawei. <laughs> oh, is it, I thought it was Hawaii. 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 No, it's Huawei. Huawei. Okay, Huawei. Yeah, they're the ones building all the 5G. Building all the 5G, listening into our Monday conversations. Do you think they're just listening to every single conversation and just logging them all away in some way even if they're, they're obviously they're, they're very thorough people I, I i think it's possible and just what they've just got like servers full of just nothing eat conversations in the hope that they occasionally hear some people genuinely saying something i don't know plotting against I, them I, I mean you know you've got to cover all bases it's, it's quite positive you know in batman when he had the phones all around gotham <laughs> something like that and then it could make up a picture and but morgan freeman wasn't happy about it <laughs> i don't remember, Do remember, that. Do remember that bit? i don't remember <laughs> it what happens <laughs> so basically batman says look I'll look look on the monitors i can see everyone around gotham just being broadcast through their their mobile phone and morgan freeman says this is i'm not happy with this but i will help you and then he, he says oh when you when you finished you can destroy it. The self-destruct password is your name. <laughs> <laughs> really weird. Right. That's a terrible Lucy. password. Why well, have that password? So Lucy, Lucius Fox. Lucius Fox. That's the character name. Lucius Fox. That's not a bad name, eh? That's that is such a writer's room name, though. <laughs> it is, isn't it? It really is. What a cool name. We need a cool name. Lucius Fox. Who have runs. you been uh so are you only into the beat 'em up games then you don't you don't do the sort of r p g explore the open world oh mate, I completed last of us it's probably the best game I've ever played does spoiler alert does the girl die three two one are you want me you want me to tell you I've given people a a, a chance to skip forward spoiler oh, alert right. spoiler coming up okay. I don't mind does she die well hold on let I me guess. Think... Let me guess. Give, give, let's give him a spoiler alert with a gap because if you do it too fast, 
Okay, this is the gap. Okay, this okay. is the gap. So at the end of the first one, she does. Um, no, she doesn't. What about number two? Spoiler alert. I, I don't. I don't know. I haven't. I haven't uh, read. I've avoided everything about it because okay, it's, okay, okay. It's, I don't. I don't. But it's such no a spoil. good. It's such a good game. It's the it's the story and acting that makes that game. Yeah, the technology is is extraordinary, isn't it? Um, I was playing one of those uh, like VR things at my brother's house the other day. Oh yeah. Um, I think it's the PS one where you've got like the two handles and they turn into things and you know you could pick stuff up, you could morph, you could fly around, you could go inside works of art, you could shoot bows and arrows, you could throw balls, you could. It was, I mean, it was insane. Yeah. It's properly. I mean, the technology has got really good. But did it did it make give you motion sickness at all? Yes. <laughs> yeah, you see, I get motion sickness from those VR headsets. I I think I did about twenty minutes, and and afterwards I was like, okay, I'm ready to go back to the real world. It's not, mm-hmm. Yeah, they are. They do. They really do. Um, I think you have to grow up with them to be all right with them, maybe. But is is that terrifying or good? What that they're that realistic? Well, that people are growing up with them, and maybe they're being maybe the Matrix is real. Oh, I see what you mean. Um, no, because, you know, it's like, what is the point of anything anyway? There's no point to anything, so it might as well all just be fake. You sound like you're working for them, man. <laughs> you're trying to convince me. I think the Matrix <laughs> is real. <laughs> well, who do you think I've got shares invested in? <laughs> the Matrix company. <laughs> <laughs> They've gone public. <laughs> That's it. I've got a £1,000 in them. <laughs> 20% growth in the last 30 days. Well, this is 20% growth in the last 30 days. Obvious dick joke I'm avoiding now. Um, this, has been, uh, this has been an absolute joy. Um, yes, how, mate. How's it been for you? It's been beautiful. It's been beautiful. Um, do, 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 how many listeners do you get for, for this? How you, dare you ask me that on the air? Are you tracking metrics? Mate, if there's a metric out there to be tracked, I'm on it. That's my style. Because Joe Joe Rogan has millions of listeners, and he's not afraid to say it. When are we when are we getting onto Spotify? That's when are we getting a hundred million dollar Spotify deal? That's what's this? What what's this? We you <laughs> you're just a guest, my friend, and you signed well, you signed away all your rights in that uh, listen, email I'm just I sent. You know, top quality financial <laughs> advice. I think I'm entitled to a cut. Okay, anyone out there who uh, takes Shiraz's picks, use the code Shiraz Picks. Uh, <laughs> in checkout, and then you'll get five percent. How's that, mate? Five percent, five percent Asian discount, and that goes directly to you. Directly to me, mate. To my fund, Good. my love fund. Good. Mother, Happy to mother. be funding your love fund. So I'm going to Moscow. This went weird, <laughs> dude. I'm sorry, but maybe, maybe you have to, maybe you have to chase her to Moscow, dude. No. Well, I mean, to be fair, you don't have any details anyway, so probably about yeah. it. But they'll let me in now because I think they've opened the flights. The land bridge, as they call it. The land bridge, yeah. <laughs> I think Putin will be happy for me to set foot over there. Have Why you don't seen... we go to Russia? Go to me and you go to Moscow and do podcasts. I'd be well up for that. I mean, how I'd much? Fucking... That would literally be the trip of a lifetime, the time we went to Moscow. <laughs> Mate, are you up for doing it? I'm really up for doing it. I have been there three times already in my life, which is quite a lot. Oh, have you? Oh, right. Have I've you never been? been? No. It's fantastic. I do want to go. It's incredible. Okay, let's plan your fourth trip then. <laughs> Why? What? So you prefer that over St. Petersburg? Uh, I don't, well, what's, I don't know the difference. Don't know what the, difference is. <laughs> the difference is St. Petersburg has, has all of the, the palaces and stuff. It has way more of the period architecture. You know, Moscow's like the big city. Okay. I don't think I care enough about that. I just want to go meet a nice Russian girl. <laughs> she has. W- would you like me to bleep everything you've just said? No, I don't care. <laughs> as long as they're Russian. So that's your kink, is it? Are you... What is it? A Russophile? I, I, do, I don't. I think yeah. I like the Russian mentality, generally, which is quite sort of to be quite direct and quite strong. 
yeah. obviously it works against you as well like in this case if someone wants to cut you off they cut you right off <laughs> but also um the opposite is true where you know you you get this very kind of um nice warm side mm. and, I, and i just i just like it and also so many russian girls have great asses <laughs> i think it's in the genes so that's very important too Right. Didn't I mean? Didn't a load of the like a whole generation of men was wiped out in Russia, and that's the a whole generation of what? Sorry, of men because of the wars. Right? They it, they they lost such a huge percent of the population that they had far more females than males for a long time. I think that's where the uh, sort of like exotic Russian, um, what do you call it? Uh, I think yeah, I think Tom, you're right. Is that the word? Yes. So. I really want to go over there. So basically what you're saying is jump on a plane with me to Moscow to help me hook up with a Russian lady. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, and you know, you, yeah. you'll have a good time too. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds quite you focused this trip, I have to say, mate. You can bring the missus and have romance or whatever married people do when they've been together for seven years. <laughs> Longer than that, thank you very much. Please know the exact amount of years and months off by heart. <laughs> Um, okay, well, I'll, I'll, I'm going to look at flights. So, Well, look, if they've opened up the air bridge or land bridge, uh, let me know. And okay. uh, yeah, in the meantime, let's talk about let's talk about the other thing soon. OK. <laughs> OK, cool. mate. Well, dude, um, it's been great having you. Uh, would you come back? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for having me on. It's fun, as always. Yeah. Cool. All right, bro. All right, mate. Catch you later. Wait. Take care. You too. You too. Mm-hmm. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> hello. Hello. Uh, uh, hello. Your reception's a bit. I'm sorry. I didn't catch a word of that. What was that? Roll it there. Uh, yes. Um, I'll just go and fetch him. Um, sir, there's somebody at the door with a, with a wobbly voice. Hey, I'm in. Alright. Um, yes, you can come in. Hello, can I help you? Five quid. Five quid, okay, here you go. Go me. thanks for listening to the show um we'll be back next week with i'd say more of the same but who knows what it will be (laughs) something or other why not uh keep fighting the good fight marcus rashford is a g uh is Father's Day the same in the USA and the UK, but not in the USA and UK for Mother's Day? Ozymandias. That's what I've got to say. I love you. Thank you for listening to the show. That was The Bliss of the Abyss. All music provided by the incredibly talented Nils Hennis Steer. If you have anything you'd like to say, positive or negative, send it to theblissoftheabyss at gmail.com and I'll see you soon.
one. Hey, Rose, it's me. I should call and see if maybe you're in now, but I guess not, so I guess I will talk to you tomorrow. And have a good night. Talk to you then. Bye.